Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. The Daily Compliance News for March 24, 2021 the All FT edition. All of our stories today come from the Financial Times. First up, Jay Clayton, former U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission chair, uh, will become the non-executive chair of Apollo Global Management um, in a uh, taking the slot of Leon Black, who has quit his leadership position. The uh, Apollo co-founder, Mark Rowan, will take over as chief executive immediately. The um, black, well-known in Wall Street circles, had come under much scrutiny and criticism for his financial relationship with Jeffrey Epstein and paying some $158 million to Epstein in, uh, in the five years ending 2017, according to the law firm De Chert, which did, uh, Deckert, rather, which did the uh, investigation, which was made public in January. It found no evidence that Black was involved in criminal activity and knew about him, but Simply paying that much money to someone like Jeffrey Epstein can be quite a reputational hit, and uh, obviously Apollo didn't want any more of it. Next up, the German regulator Boffin has poached the head of the Swiss uh, regulator, or rather Germany has poached the head of the Swiss regulator to lead Boffin. Mark Branson, head of the Swiss financial watchdog FINMA, is set to become president of Boffin, as the German regulator looks to rebuild its shattered reputation from the Wirecard scandal. Um, both the Boffin boss, Felix Hufield, and his deputy, Elizabeth Rogel, were ousted in January in, over their handling of the worst accounting fraud in Germany's post-war history. Um, the Boffin reputation could not have sunk any lower, um, as not only was there corruption at the very top of Boffin, uh, Boffin... Um, filed criminal charges against uh, FTM reporters who uh, helped expose the Wirecard scandal. And Boffin employees actually had an investment pool in Wirecard at the same time they were alleged to be regulating it. So lots of cultural changes needed in the German regulators. It's going to be interesting to see if uh, some Swiss discipline can be brought to the German regulator. Next up, the insurance giant's Marsh and McLennan has come under scrutiny for its role in the Greensill capital collapse. Chris Credit Suisse's internal review has pointed the finger at the insurance broker, and Greenfield lent money to customers based upon insurance from Marsh Mac. Uh, it appears that Marsh Mac did uh, little uh, to no due diligence, and um, while Marsh Mac was Greensill's Commercial insurance broker was responsible for finding cover for the financial group against the non-payment by its borrowers. Chris Credit Suisse extended a $140 million bridging loan to Greensill uh, last October in expectation of the business listing. It contacted Marsh as part of the due diligence. On two separate phone calls, Marsh representatives told the bank that uh, policies uh, underwrote the firm's, the fund's assets, and they covered the durability and duration of the entire matter. They gave no indication of problems regarding renewal of the policies, which turned out to be uh, completely uh, incorrect as uh, the ultimate insurers were failed to or refused to insure going forward. And finally, the FT editorial board gives a fairly damning um op-ed piece today about the dangers of export control violations, or rather export control of COVID vaccines and the need for agreement on all. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.